In this presentation, we will enter common expense and cash payment transactions. Time to engage with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're currently in the customer and sales section. We're going to be making some payments now, some common types of payments. So we're going to move on down to the vendors and purchases section. A couple ways we can make the payments. We can use the check document. So if we were to use a check document, we could say we're going to make a new uh, check. Another way we can do this is to go on to the banking information down here. To go down to banking if you're making a lot of uh, checks and you're just entering this into the system. Possibly if they're going to be electronic type of transactions and they don't have a check. Or if you're not printing the check and you're just entering the checks into the, to the system. You can also go to the account register and then choose the account register. And that might be the fastest way to enter those types of transactions into the system. Let's start off by going back up to the vendors and taking a look at that check form. Note that there's a couple different places we can find this check form. One is in the vendor section. Another is in the banking section. So let's go to the check. I'm going to go and say we want a new check. So we'll go to the new check. Note that even though we're using basically a check form, we hit the drop down over here. We can still use this, this data input form for any kind of basically cash going out. We can have a cash transaction, an Amex transaction, and so on and so forth. So you, if it's not a check, then you, you might want to say, okay, I'm just going to record the, the decrease with this same basically uh, check form and choose a different type of check payment for it. And then I'm going to go back up top. I'm going to say that uh, we have the vendor ID. The first one is going to be safe insurance. So we're going to be paying our insurance bill here. I don't think we have safe insurance yet set up. So I'm going to say we want to add it. I'm going to say we're going to add the safe insurance. We're going to add a new vendor for it. The vendor ID then is just going to be safe uh, insurance and company. And then I'm going to copy that. And we'll put that in the name down below as well. So that's going to be it. I'm going to save this. So we'll save it up top. And I'm going to say, if, oh, we need an account for it. So I'm going to go down here and say the account. Now note, whenever we go to this one, you would think it would be insurance expense, right? Down here, insurance expense. But when we write it to safe insurance, our debate, or the question is whether or not we want to put it as an expense or as an asset. Now, typically insurance is going to be the classic kind of example of something that's going to be a prepaid amount because whenever we pay for insurance, we pay for it before we get to the coverage. So therefore, when we put it into insurance, generally we would want to put it into prepaid insurance instead of insurance expense and then at the end of the period at the end of the month or year then we would do the adjusting entry taking the amount out of the prepaid insurance for the amount that had then been consumed and expensing it at that time so really i'm looking for an asset account up top to see if we have a prepaid account so it would, would be in like an other current asset so we've got a lot of uh the, the payroll accounts income long term da, 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 i don't see one so uh, let's go ahead and add one i'm going to say add a new account as we go and we're going to be adding a new account now i'm going to take a look at the account numbers here i'm looking at the account numbers and we want it to be somewhere in the other current assets type of account so other current assets are going to be up top so we have investments that's uh 1290 so let's put this in like uh, 1295, let's say 1295, uh, 1295. And then I'm going to say this is prepaid insurance. And then the type of account that we want is going to be an other asset account. So I'm going to go all the way down to the other current asset down below. And obviously no beginning balance. So we're going to say keep it there and save that. So we will save that. I will close that. And then I can put that prepaid insurance, which was 1295 here. So there's going to be our prepaid insurance. That's going to be the default account every time we pay off this vendor. So then I'm going to save that. And then we can close out our vendor window. And then we can choose that vendor, which is going to be the insurance. So we're going to say this is going to be our insurance vendor, which I just set up. Oh, a safe insurance. That's the one. So we'll say that and then the check number or I'm just going to say it's going to be here. And then we're going to say the date. The date I'm going to say is 013020. And we, we can, again, we can make it a check or we can make it some other type of format if it wasn't an actual check and still use this form. Right. And then I could say this is, you know, some other like a, a, an electronic transfer maybe or something like that and still use a, a form such as this to record it. 
And then I'm going to say that the amount, we'll pick up the amount, which is going to be 11,000. We're going to say that's for a year's worth of insurance. And that is going to be it. The other side is going to be going to the 1295, which is picking up now because it's picking that up given the fact that we listed that as the account to be going to for that particular vendor. So whenever we choose that vendor, then it's going to be going to that default account. It's going to also be going over here to our cash account. Let's make sure it's the checking account. That's the one. So what's going to happen when we do this? It's going to decrease the checking account. The other side is going to go to a prepaid account, not an expense which will be that prepaid insurance. Let's save it and check it out. So we'll say save and then yes, please. Gonna close this back out and we'll check out our uh, information. Let's do that with the um, reports up top. We'll go to the financial statements and let's go to the balance sheets. I'm gonna open up the balance sheet, make this for uh, January. So we'll pick it up for January. And then within the balance sheet, we have a payment in the checking account. Double clicking on that checking account, there's the 11,000 decrease there. If we double click on that, we get, of course, two hour form. Closing this back out, closing this back out. The other side then going into prepaid insurance. There it is in prepaid insurance, increasing the 11,000 there. So I'm going to close uh, this back out and then we'll go back to uh, uh, our forms here. So we're going to do this again. So let's go back on over and we're going to say, all right, let's go back over here. We're going to make another one of these. Sage 50 is easy to, I'm going to close this and let's make another check up top. And we're going to say new check. This time we're going to write one to Staples here. So Staples is going to be a new vendor again. I don't think we have Staples in here yet. It's an office supply type store. So I'm going to say new. So we'll say new so that we can add this vendor. And it's going to be Staples. Staples. So there we have it. And then I'm going to say tab. I'll put that in the name here, Staples. And then we need the account. So the account for Staples is typically going to be like an office supplies type of thing. So I'm going to see if they have given us the office supplies or something such as that office supplies expense. That seems good. Let's pick that one. So that'll be like the default type of account that will be affected for this particular vendor when, when it is used. Let's go ahead and save that. And then we'll close this back out. So we'll save and close that. And then I'm going to pick staples. So we'll say staples. There we have it. And then we could pick a check no a check number or reference number. And maybe this again is an E, like an electronic transfer. We're going to make this 013020. And then let's put that into the uh, cash. And then I'm just going to say that the amount is going to be 500. The amount of 500 the other side then going to the office supplies expense so what's going to happen we're going to be decreasing the cash checking account goes down the other side goes to the office supplies expense so then i'm going to save that we're going to say yes please and then close that back out and then we'll go to the to the uh reports so that means the checking account will be decreasing double clicking on the checking account we've got the decrease of that 500 for staples Closing this back out and minimizing this, the other side is going to be in the reports. So let's go on back to the reports. Let's go to the income statement. So we'll go on down to the income statement. Going to pick this one for January. So we'll say January. And I don't need the zero balances. So we'll, we will remove them and then say OK. And then now we have that uh, expense, the office supplies down here. So there's the office supplies expense now affecting the income statement. All right, that was good times. Let's do it again. So we're going to go back on over. We're going to go back on over. We're going to write one for Edison, which is our utility company. So we're going to select the right check drop down again. We're going to say it's a new check. And we're going to be writing this to Edison. So we'll make a new uh, vendor here. We're going to say new. And then we'll make a new vendor for Edison. So we'll open this up and the vendor is going to be Edison. So then I'm going to copy that and that'll be the name as well. So there we have that. I'm going to then say save that and OK. And then I'm going to close this. Oh, actually, we need we need the other side of it. So the other side's typically going to go to utilities. So utilities over here, let's see if we have one. So I'm going to select the drop down and see if we have something like a utilities. There's the utilities expense. That's the one we're going to use. I'm going to save that now. Let's see if it lets me save it this time. And then close this back out. 
And then we're going to say this is going to Edison. So there it is. And then we could put a reference number. Uh, and then I'm going to say the date 013020. Then I'm going to keep it there. And we're going to say the amount is going to be 620. The other side then go into the cash account. So cash accounts going down. And then the uh, the account for this vendor being the Edison, which is going to be the utilities expense. So there we have that. So we're going to say, all right, that looks good. Let's uh, save it and check it out. We will then save that, close this out. Let's go back to our financials and take a look at them. And we'll take a look at our balance sheet. Refresh. If it does not do so automatically, then we're going to go into the checking account. Within the checking account, we see Edison here on uh, the 620. Closing this back out, the other side then on the income statement. So if we go back on over to the income statement, refresh the report then, and we see the other side in the utilities on the income statement. So there are those items. Next, we're going to do this again for our telephone. So we're going to go back on over for the telephone, and uh, we'll go to the right checks. We're going to say we want a new check up top. We're going to say this is going to be Verizon, which is going to be our phone company. So we're going to say new and pick up a new one and uh, this is going to be a new vendor a new one a new vendor we'll say the vendor name is going to be verizon and we're going to copy that and verizon will be that and then the other side is going to be the telephone let's see if we have a telephone or if they just have a utility so let's see if we have a telephone expense we do so there's the telephone expense that has been provided for us by sage so let's go ahead and then uh, save that and then close this out and then we'll pick up Verizon. So Verizon and tabbing through, tabbing through. And we're going to say this is something like that. 013020 cash is going to be the other side. The amount of the payment is going to be for 360. We're going to say the other side of the account then go into the telephone note that if you did need to split it you can use this item so that if we had like more than two accounts involved that's what that split does so there we have that this is going to be of course decreasing cash other side going to the expense account that being the telephone expense let's go ahead and save this and check it out so we're going to save that and say yes and then close and then go to our reports and let's take a look at the balance sheet report we will refresh it go into the checking account and then in uh, then we have the Verizon and notice I put uh, 3600 should be three should be 360 I'll see if I can adjust that see if they let me adjust it here so I'm gonna say what if I try to adjust this check for 360 and then save this check let's see if we can then save it and then go okay and then I'm going to close this back out. And then it does let us adjust the check there. So now the Verizon checks at the 360. I'm going to close this back out. And then the other side then go into the income statement. Going back to the income statement. And refresh. If it doesn't do so already for you, I think mine is. We have the telephone now at the 360. So here we have our income statement at this point in time. I will be printing the report so you can kind of take a look at them uh, as you reference them as you go through the practice problem, but that's going to be... ...be it for now. Let's get out of here.